Good evening, guys. Uh, this is a rapid uh, 15 minutes uh, revision for especially exam going species. So you can revise. So today's uh, topic is uh, mastocytosis. So normally mastocytosis is the mast cells will acquire a mutation in the CD117 and uh, C kit leading to the excessive proliferation of your mast cells, right? So how does this mastocytosis is classified? It is classified as cutaneous, systemic and mast cell sarcoma. So mast cell sarcoma is nothing but a local destructive solid tumor. You will see a lot of uh, typical mast cells and it should not fulfill the criteria for your systemic mastocytosis. So before going into the classification and main thing, we just go about the pathogenesis of mastocytosis. So normally the CK gene is located on chromosome number four. So this gene will code for your proteins which will form your CK receptor. So like any receptor, it will have a extracellular domain, transmembrane domain and intracellular domain. So in this intracellular domain, you have some ATP binding domain and phosphoryl transferase domain. This is constitutes your activation loop. So normally what happens, you have a stem cell factor which will bind on this receptor. So once this uh, binds on the receptor, the receptor will undergo dimerization leading to intracellular tyrosine kinase activation because once the dimerization happens, they will come closer. This leads to autophosphorylation of your tyrosine residue which will lead to utilization of ATP to ADP in that re tyrosine residue leading to activation of this secondary messengers which are present in your cytoplasm leading to activation of this RAS, PIK3, JAK2 pathway, leading to the proliferation and cell division, okay? This is normal. So when you don't have this growth factor, this will not happen. So what happens in mastocytosis is, this C kit gene is there, no? There at 816 codon, there will some point mutation will happen. Point mutation is at this position, the aspartic acid gets replaced by valine. Because of this, this phosphoryl uh, transferase domain is there, no? that gets mutated. So without activating this receptor, it continuously becomes active, okay? Leading to the excessive proliferation and activation of all these pathways, leading to mastocytosis. So for this uh, CD11 uh, positive, we have a targeted therapy that is imatinib. But that imatinib will not work here because this is a binding site for your imatinib. Here only there is a mutation. So it cannot bind to the site. That's why you give a drugs like midosatrine and avaprinib. Got it? So this was a pathogenesis of your mastocytosis. So how the mastocytosis is classified as a cutaneous systemic muscle sarcoma. In sarcoma, you have the solid tumor and locally destructive. Secret, you should know what are the other tumors which are secret positive, like your gist, right? Your gist, seminoma, etc. You should know the other secret positive tumors also. Now, coming to cutaneous mastocytosis, this is common in the child. So, it is three types one is urticaria pigmentosa, diffuse mastocytosis, and cutaneous mastocytoma. Cytoma means there will be only a single lesion. Diffuse means is diffusely involving your dermis. Urticaria pigmentosa means the patient will have lots of rashes. So when you do a biopsy from the skin, you will see a, a aggregates of mast cells. So when to call aggregates of mast cells, when you are seeing more than or equal to 15 mast cells. Okay, and these aggregates will be seen along your hair follicle or along your blood vessels. So what is cutaneous mastocytosis common in children? You have three types, urticaria pigmentosa, diffused and cutaneous mastocytoma, cytoma, right? Mastocytoma means it's a single lesion. Diffused means it is involving a band like in the dermis. Then urticaria pigmentosa means you have lots of papillomacular rashes. The mast cells will be in aggregates. What is the definition of aggregates? More than 15 mast cells. These are present around the adenexa or along the blood vessels. Now coming to systemic mastocytosis. So don't see all this, just focus on where I'm pointing out. So to call it, you should have some criteria. That is, you have one major criteria and one minor criteria. Major criteria, either you should have one major or one minor or three minor criteria. So major, you should see this aggregates, that is more than 15 cells of mast cells. You should see multifocal involving 
the bone marrow or any extra cutaneous organs. The each aggregate will be more than 15 mast cells. So you should have multi-focus uh, dense infiltrate of this mast cell aggregates. Myer means you should see that uh, CKD816 V mutation or this mast cells are abnormal. So they will express CD2, 25 and 30. Normally the serum triplase will be less than 20 nanogram per ml. Uh, ml. They will be more than that. And you should see at least more than 25% of mast cells which are atypical okay, in your uh, bone marrow or extracutaneous organ. That is one thing. Now you have uh, something called as B findings and C findings. B finding is called as burden of disease. C finding is called as cytoreduction required. So what are the B findings? Again, your kit mutation, uh, serum triptase levels more than 200. And you should have organomegaly like hepatosplenomegaly or lymphadenopathy, any organ damage. And in bone marrow, you should see more than 30% of mast cells. So what is this VAF? This kit mutation is uh, identified through one of the molecular technique that is uh, NGS, next gene sequencing, where you have the varied allele fraction. So that should be at least more than 10%. So where you will count some 100 strands and see which almost one strand is showing, you will not consider at least some 10 strands should show that mutation, then only we take it as a uh, this mutation. So that is called varied allele fraction should be at least more than 10%. <clears throat> then uh, coming to your uh, C findings, where you see cytopenia, C cytopenia. So remember, acute neutrophil count is less than 1000, hemoglobin less than 10, and platelet count less than 1 lakh, and you should see organomegaly. And because of this organomegaly, there should be failure, like ascites, if there is a hepatomegaly. So ascites, cirrhosis, portal hypertension, uh, raised liver enzymes, splenomegaly, and GI. They, this mast cells will infiltrate your GA also. So that leads to malabsorption, weight loss, and hyperalbuminia. In bone, you will see lots of osteolysis fraction and bone, uh, bone pain, okay, because of this uh, lysis fracture and bone pain. Now coming to the types of mastocytosis, you have mast cell leukemia. As you know, any leukemia blasts more than 20%, right? In your bone marrow. In the peripheral smear based on the mast cells, we don't we don't see uh, mast cells in peripheral smear, right? If you're seeing more than 10, you call it as classic uh, mast cell leukemia. If you're seeing less than 10, you call it a leukemic mast cell leukemia. Based on the C findings, if C findings are present, it becomes acute mast cell leukemia. If it is not there, it becomes chronic mast cell leukemia, which has a better prognosis. Then next comes your bone marrow mastocytosis means that there will be no skin lesion, only the bone marrow is involved and there will be no B findings. The serum triptase levels are less than 125 nanogram per milliliter and there is no dense infiltrating in any extra medullary organ. So what are the three types of mastocytosis? One is mast cell, uh, systemic mastocytosis, one is your mast cell leukemia. Then bone marrow mastocytosis. Now systemic mastocytosis we will divide like indolent, smoldering, aggressive and associated with hematological malignancies. So associated with hematological malignancies like they can be uh, seen in some other MDS, NPN, acute leukemia, CML, chronic myelomonocytic leukemias. In aggressive definitely you know there should be some C symptoms will be present right more than or one C symptoms. Now coming to indolent and smoldering. Indolent you have less than or equal to 1B finding whereas smoldering more than or equal to two B findings you should see. There should be no C findings. Now in indolent, again you have whether presence of skin lesion or absence of skin lesion. Presence of skin lesion plus one or equal to B finding is done. If you don't have a skin lesion but you have one B finding, then you should look for your serum triptase levels which should be more than 125 nanogram and there should be some dense infiltrate of mast cells in other extra medullary organ. So this is about the systemic mastocytosis. So coming to the gist of the systemic mastocytosis, you should know the major criteria, minor criteria, one major, one minor or three minor criteria. Then you should know what is B findings, that is burden of disease. C findings, that is uh, cytoreductive, uh, cytoreduction required. Then the mass uh, systemic mastocytosis is three, that is mast cell leukemia, your bone marrow mastocytosis, systemic mastocytosis. That is again you have indolent systemic mastocytosis, smoldering systemic mastocytosis, aggressive systemic mastocytosis and systemic mastocytosis associated with hematological malignancies. So I hope you liked it. Thanks for listening.